You have a Google spreadsheet and you want to access the data in JavaScript. First things first, you need to set your spreadsheet to publicly visible. So make sure it says here, anyone with this link. I'm going to cover a couple of methods here. The first option is loading everything in your sheet as CSV data. That just means comma separated values. So if your spreadsheet looks like this in CSV, it will look like this. This method is only for people who want to grab everything in the sheet. And we're going to look at how to do this with and without jQuery. The final method is using a SQL query. So Google will just send us the parts of our sheet that we requested. All the code is in GitHub repos linked below. Uh, just grab what you want, watch that section and get on with your life. Let's go. This method is for people who have jQuery and want to load all the data from a sheet while writing as little of their own code as possible. Actually, let's look at the HTML file first. Um, here I'm loading jQuery from a CDN. And here I'm loading what is called jQuery CSV. jQuery CSV will give us a couple of methods that make it easy to parse the response. So the first few lines here are just getting the format of the URL right. Um, the sheet ID, what you're going to have to do here is go to your spreadsheet and grab this part of the URL between these two slashes. And you have this really long string of letters and numbers here. You're going to have to copy that and paste it here. Then we have the sheet name. The sheet is the individual tab. You can have many of them. Mine is called class data. And then we're, we're putting that information into the sheet URL. And then we're using that to do our actual Ajax request. Now, in this case, we're logging the response we get back from Google. And if I reload this page, you'll see this is the raw CSV data that we get back from Google. Then I'm using the one of the functions that we loaded with jQuery CSV is called two objects. And if we take that CSV data and pass it to the two objects method, um, we'll see the results of that here. It will turn this CSV data into these nicely formatted objects. The caveat is this. If you look at what you get for the checkboxes, you're not getting JavaScript Boolean true and false. You're getting a string with true or false in it. So you have to be aware of that. And for the dates, you're getting the date as it appears in your spreadsheet as a string. So you're not getting a JavaScript date object. Um, and this may be fine. If, if you want to do anything fancier with your dates, you may want to convert them to JavaScript date objects. We'll look more at how to do that in the next video. And in the final section, we'll have like a very robust way of doing that. With this method, we're going to be grabbing all the data from our sheet using vanilla JavaScript. First thing you'll need is the, well, what I'm calling the sheet ID, this right here. Um, go to your spreadsheet in the URL, find this long string of letters and numbers between those two slashes, copy that and paste it in here in your project. Then you're going to need the name of the individual sheet. A sheet is basically a tab within a spreadsheet document. So I only have one sheet in my spreadsheet. It's called class data. And then line three just formats the, uh, the URL that we need to make our request to Google. Then we're doing a very simple fetch and we have to make the response into text. By the time we get here, we have our response as CSV text. Um, and let's get rid of the complexity here and just for a moment, uh, log to the console what we have so far. Yeah, so this is it. It's just comma delimited uh, version of our um, spreadsheet. So what comes next is to 
parse that CSV data into something a little more usable. I'm parsing it into JavaScript objects. And if we run that on this line and then log that, we can see what our objects will look like. And here they are. Now in my spreadsheet, I very intentionally put dates and checkboxes so that you could see that the way we're getting that data in the CSV isn't the best. The Boolean data isn't coming in as actual JavaScript Boolean data. It's a string that contains false and our dates are coming in as string versions of the dates as they are formatted in the spreadsheet. This might be okay for a lot of uses. Um, there's a lot of ways that you could approach dealing with this. In the third method I'm going to show you, uh, we have a very robust way of taking your dates and making them into JavaScript dates. One thing you could do, I suppose, in my case, I know that I have dates in the enrolled column. So I could, I could just check to see if the property name I'm currently examining is the enrolled property. And if it is, use this code to pass that date string into new date in JavaScript. And if we do something like that, enrolled now contains a JavaScript date object. But again, I recommend the SQL method, which is next. Okay, now that the losers are gone and just the cool people are left, we can write SQL queries to get just the data we want out of our sheet. Looking at my HTML for this code, I'm loading in two JavaScript files. Get sheet data does the actual sort of fetching of the data from Google. Script.js really represents the file that the JavaScript that you'll be working with. In your script, you'll have something that looks like this. Because the get sheet data uh, JS basically creates a function, you, if it's already loaded, you can call that function and just pass into it what you have to pass into it. And you don't really ever have to deal with the internals of that function. What you have to pass in is, first of all, what I'm calling a sheet ID, which is if you look at the URL for your spreadsheet, there's this long string of letters and numbers between two slashes here. Grab that and paste it in here. Then you'll have to pass in, ugh, you'll have to pass in the sheet name. And that is basically the name of the tab, uh, the sheet as Google calls it, within the entire spreadsheet document. You can have multiple tabs. Mine is called class data. Put that string here. Then you're going to pass in your SQL query. And I've included some examples of different SQL queries you can write if you're not too familiar with SQL. Just use the examples and sort of copy them and change them. The one thing you need to be aware of is that if you've used databases before, when you're specifying the column in a database, you're using the actual sort of column name. Spreadsheets are different. This column is actually just called C, right? So when we write our SQL queries, you're going to see all of these letters. And that's how we refer to the columns. And then we also pass in a callback which is just a function that will be called when get sheet data gets a response. It's going to call that function. So again, that function is something that you're going to write that will receive the response. So let's look at an example. I have a spreadsheet here that contains all of my special lady friends. And believe me, when you're on my level, you're going to need a spreadsheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my ID or what I'm calling an ID. This is not an official term. Sticking it in here. Then I have to get the name of the individual sheet, which is just called sheet one. And for the moment, the query will just be select asterisk, which just means grab everything. And the callback will be ladies response, which is a function that I'm defining up here. And all it's going to do is uh, log the response to the console. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we are getting back from Google. Okay, this is all the data we're getting back. We can see some of our names in here. Um, 
And I've, I've actually just confused you a bit probably because what what's being logged to the console first is something in get sheet data. Um, it's, it's the log is happening here. So this is the raw data we're getting back from uh, Google. And this function will parse it into objects. And so you can see that the actual objects that you're going to be working with uh, look like this. So it's all very nice and pretty. But just to provide an example, I'm going to write my own query. And what I want to do is extract just the top notch hot ladies. I like my meats aged and I've got a big appetite. So I'm going to select only where the weight, which is column B, is greater than, let's say, 250. And let's also make sure that they're born before 1960. And some people like teeth on a woman. Personally, I don't get it. See if this works. And now I have two responses. Yeah, okay, so this is doing what I expect it to do. So yeah, this is how you can write kind of more complex queries if you need to. Now again, you don't actually have to know what's happening in the get sheet data file, but let's take a look at it. The first few lines, we're just formatting the URL that we need to make our request. Then we have our fetch. Uh, once we run this dot text, we have sort of formatted our uh, response as text. And then we're just calling the callback with the data that we got back after having parsed it. Now the parsing function is the most complex part of this. Um, I should get rid of that. I have to give credit to Lawrence Svekis. He has a free tutorial on Udemy uh, on just this topic and almost all of this code. I think all of the code in this function comes from him. I didn't bother to write it because he already wrote it <laughs> and it works perfectly. So if we look at the raw response, actually, let's let's put that console log back. If we look at the raw response we get back from Google, it comes in this weird format with all this text up front. So what he's doing or what we're doing now that we've stolen his code is that we are chopping off the first 47 characters of this response, right? So we're saying, eh, forget about all this. Then we're chopping off the last couple of characters. So we have to get rid of that last parentheses because we got rid of the first one. Um, then we're taking all this information in the middle and we are doing a JSON parse on that. So we can treat this as actual JSON data. And then we can get serious about parsing that data. One of the interesting things that this code does is it finds data that is formatted as a date because of the way we get the data back here, instead of just being a bunch of strings like we get with the CSV data. When we have a date, we actually get it back as an object with the date formatted two ways. So because one of the formattings actually has the word date in it, we're able to check here to see is the thing that we're looking at right now an actual date. And if it is, we're going to change it to a JavaScript date. So if we look at the, the formatted data we get back, our dates are not just strings yanked straight out of the spreadsheet. They are JavaScript dates, our Booleans, our actual Booleans. So go ahead and grab this code from GitHub below. On your end, all you'll be writing is something that looks like this. Just pass in the data that is required. Well, all you have to be able to do is write a SQL query. And that's it. So get in there, use it in your project. And uh, I would say have fun, but you're not having fun. Let's keep it real. Your <laughs> you're a web developer. What do you <laughs> Don't have fun. Get your work done. All right, that's it for now. I'm out of here. Bye.